for our service today. We are looking at uh, Solusi. We are looking at uh, Solusi because we are all here for Solusi. It is Solusi that um, has brought us together. Solusi, our mother, we are all here because our mother has given birth to each one of us, given birth to those from the primary, they are here with us, given birth to those from our high school next to us. Originally, it was all under one roof, a primary here, a high school here, the college, university here, and uh, these entities are all Solusi. That's why if you walk to the primary, Solusi. If you walk to the high school, Solusi. If you walk to the university, Solusi. The only difference is the level. Am I correct? It's the level. If you are at primary, Solusi primary. If you are at high school, Solusi high school. Now, if you are at college, university, Solusi University. So our title of our message today, Solusi, a foretest of heaven. Solusi, a foretest of heaven. Let us pray together. Father God, we commit to you this message. We commit to you your holy word as we will engage it, reflect on it, meditate on it, speak to us, speak to our hearts, inspire us, motivate us, correct us, and uh, inspire us, God, above all. Prepare each one of us to be of service in this world and in the world to come. We thank you so much, God, for this ministry, the ministry of the spoken word. This is our prayer. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. May I request the family, Solus University Church, and our guests that have joined us today, may we all open our Bibles. Let's open our Bibles. Let's open our Bibles to Luke chapter 9. It reads as follows. Now it came to pass about eight days after these sayings that he took Peter, John, and James and went up to the mountain to pray. As he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered and his robe became white and glistering. Verse 30, and behold, two men talked with him, who were Moses and Elijah, and may God bless the reading of his word. What does the church say? Thank you very much. So Lucy, a foretest of heaven. As we look at this passage, it is in the New Testament. And uh, the author who happens to be Luke, he presents to us a scenario here. It's late in the evening, and Christ has been very busy healing, teaching, praying, ministering to people in different ways. But now it's towards evening, and the sun is almost towards sunset. And the record says, at that very moment, Christ invites three of his disciples. That is Peter, John, and James. And he invites them, he asks them to climb a mountain. And these guys have been busy, they are tired, the day has just uh, been, uh, 
it has been a busy day for each one of them. And they, now they are asked to climb a mountain. Climbing a mountain when you are tired is not easy. Climbing a mountain when you have been so busy is not easy. And they remember, a mountain requires you to, to, to go up. You are not going down. And the way you get the strength to go up. But Jesus, the master of the universe, Jesus, the creator, Jesus, the one who owns mountains, the one who owns values, he says, I am at peace with nature. I enjoy nature. Do you enjoy nature, Mr. Mkandla? And Jesus says, come with me. As we look at the very place where they are invited to uh, spend time with Jesus, the record puts it clear there is a mountain. And as I looked at a mountain, a mountain is a dry, hard place. But Jesus chooses such a place which is dry, hard. And he says, the very same place, I want you to experience a foretaste of heaven. A mountain is a desert place. Very few vegetation, vegetation are able to uh, grow from a mountainous place. Very few, if none. We also have mountains here around Solusi. Not only uh, a, a mountainous place becomes very difficult for vegetation to grow, but a mountainous place is a home for snakes and the other dangerous animals. But Jesus, who formed mountains, Jesus, who formed valleys, he says, I am at home with nature and I enjoy its silence. A mountain or a mountainous place is a drought-stricken place. To most of us, as we look at such places, there is those places, to, to most of us, are hopeless places. You don't expect any production. You don't expect any life. There is no hope in a mountainous place. But Jesus, yet, he leads his disciples up this difficult ascent. And he points to the mountainous side as the very place where he wishes for them to have a foretaste of heaven. What are the lessons that we can pick and draw from this lesson? Number one, there is a location. There is a location. Lesson number one, there is a location. There is a location. Christ identifies a mountain as a venue for his ministry. A venue for where he will spend much time with his disciples. The location is a mountainous place. Take note of this one. What makes a place unique is not what is around it. It's not what's on it is not what can come out of it. No. What makes a place unique is God's presence. Whether there is a mountainous place, as long as God's presence is there, it will make a difference. Even a dry, a desert like Sahara, as long as God moves to a desert, there will be life. God has chosen solution. God has chosen solution. It looks like a desert. Historians are here. Doc Spanda. See, they will agree with me. This is a desert. A dry place. A mountainous place. If you go to our campsite there, it's mountains. You go to Ketsemane there, it's mountains. We are surrounded by mountains. Not only is it a desert, not only is it a dry place, not only is it a mountainous place, but another risk of this place is a mosquito place. That's why our missionaries who first came here, they did not die out of cancer, they did not die out of COVID, they did not die out of any disease, but they died as a result of mosquito. They are sleeping here. 
But God led those missionaries. He led them to this place. And when he led them to this place, like Jesus, who led Peter, John, and James to a dry, hard place, to a desert place, to a place that really was just hopeless in the eyes of the disciples. God led our first missionaries to this very place called Solusi. He did not only lead them, but he, through the prophetic voice that is Ellen White, while she was in Australia, she said when he was asked by the general conference, can we take the place when the heathens had offered this place and the church did not want to accept a gift from heathens. Ellen White, under the inspiration of God, pointed to this place. So, if God has pointed to this place, you think the place is common? You think the place is ordinary? No, this is the place. Lesson number two. That type of people who went to the mountain. That type of people who went to the mountain. According to verse 28, is Jesus, Peter, John, and James. In our context, our university context, allow me to submit Jesus as the vice chancellor. And as the vice chancellor, his parents who gave birth, who are part of him from the human point of sight, his parents are ordinary parents. Joseph and Mary, uneducated, poor, with no status in the society. In fact, as they went to church on Sabbath, they went empty-handed because sometimes they could not even afford a pigeon. They could not even afford a dove as an offering. They just went to church and they gave their hearts. The parents were poor. Record says when Mary gave birth, they could not even afford to rent a lodge. They could not afford to rent a hotel. Hence, Mary gave Jesus, gave, gave birth to Jesus in a call because the parents could not afford. And you know, mothers who are here, when you are expecting, you do your best, you, you, you have everything. Uh, you, 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 you run a baby shower so that you have everything, so that you, you are ready to welcome the baby. But with Jesus, even our booties were not there. You know, my booties, baby shoes were not even there. And Mary gave birth to this baby Jesus in a crawl. But take note of this one. This is the very same Jesus who now takes Peter and John. And in our context, in our university context, allow me to see a vice chancellor in Jesus. Allow me to see Professor Paicha in Jesus. And not only a vice chancellor in a university, but in a university, the other people that are, that are called are professors in the form of educators, but the most common core people also are students. That's why now we have just welcomed our 59 students from Angola and our two students from, uh, from Mozambique and the rest of our local students. Now, Professor Jesus, Vice Chancellor Jesus, identifies these three students and he says, come with me, let's go. Let's go and do business. Let's go. I need to teach you. Let's go. I need to pray with you. Let's go. I need to minister to you. But if you look at the type of students that Jesus recruited, these were not from powerful families. According to Acts 4 verse 13, these three students were unschooled. These three students were fishermen from the village, from the countryside. These three students were just ordinary people. Who are the students at Solusi? Take note of the students that are recruited at Solusi. I have noted as I looked at this passage, I looked at Peter 
an ordinary student. I looked at James, an ordinary student. I looked at John, just a fisherman, and schooled ordinary students from the village. Now, take note of the students that have gone through Solusi corridors. These students that have been admitted at Solusi, they have not been admitted because they had excellent grades. No. The highest qualification to come in into Solusi, two points. How many points? Two points at a level. You are admitted at Solusi to do any degree in theology, in business, in education, two points. If you don't have two points, you are admitted at Solusi through mature age. Mature age, 25. If you are struggling with uh, two points, just wait for 25 years and have five or less, we shall admit you at Solusi. Just wait. The reason is so that you are able to cope up with university life. It's not an ordinary uh, uh, qualification. It's the highest qualification. As you go out to do recruitment, go with these packages. That is Solusi University. Is God this university. It will give you a fortress of heaven. It has no hopeless cases. Everyone has a hope through Jesus. Did you know that Peter and John and James who were unschooled, who were ordinary, who could not even write and do much. But now when they were in the hands of Jesus, when, when they were now in the master's service, working for the master, being part of the master, being part of the environment which had the master's present at the mountain top there, the record says, they were changed. They were glorified. Ah! Not only that, are you aware that Peter, James, and John are among the 27 authors of the New Testament? From mature age, admission into Jesus' ministry, the ministry of the whole universe, the ministry of redemption, not even an ordinary uh, ministry, not an ordinary university, the university of heaven, the university that deals with salvation, that deals with redemption. Peter, John, James, from ordinary to authors of the Bible. Peter authored the two, first and the second. John authored the five. Uh, John, the gospel, according to John, the gospel that comes after Luke. That is his first book. The second book, first John. Second book, second John. Third book, third John. Then the last one, I saw a new heaven. From mature age to a new heaven. From intensive to a new heaven. That is John. Why? He was in the university of Jesus. A fortress of heaven. God can do anything with a human being. All what we need to do, let's give God an opportunity. So Lucy University, let's go out there and bring human beings to Solus University, male and a female, and let us restore them in God's image. This is the purpose of Solus. I look forward. I look forward as a Solus church member. My membership is at Solusi. I look forward as a Solusi University church member. That in our website, we want to see powerful testimonies of students that came to Solusi, who in the eyes of the world appeared hopeless. I know quite a number of them. Some of them now are uh, managers, CEOs of big companies not only here in Zimbabwe, but even in New York, some in Australia, some in England, but they went through the corridors of Solusi. This is Solusi. It is indeed a fortress of heaven. It is indeed a place where really human beings are restored. Their dignity is restored. Their spirituality is restored. Their academic is restored. And they are given hope. This is Solusi. 
it has that potential. Yesterday, an attack came, not from WhatsApp, but from renowned papers. Ten top universities in Zimbabwe, we are sitting at number seven, a number that has to do with the holiness. We are very holy. Sitting at number seven. Mfana, come to Solus. Sitting at number seven. We are not even number eight. We are not even number nine. We are not even number ten. Where we are closing the door. Number seven. Are you there? Number seven. Angolian pastors, are you here? You have not come to an ordinary university. You have come to a university that is of renown. Sitting on number seven. Go to Angola there and tell the good news that we made a good decision to join Solusi, a powerful university, a university of God. What is our pattern now? As a university, our pattern, Mr. Vice Chancellor, is to give all our students a foretaste of heaven, like what our uh, predecessors, uh, leaders, those who have gone ahead of us, we have led Solusi. They gave every student that came to Solusi a foretest of heaven. Our pattern, Mr. Vice Chancellor, through our prayers, through our ministry, is to give a manifestation of God's glory at Solusi University. Our pattern, Mr. Vice Chancellor, like Jesus had a pattern in his heart. What was Jesus' pattern on his heart on that mountain? The record says he really cried, he really prayed, he really agonized with God. And the record says in verse 29, as he agonized, as he prayed, as he really interceded, the record says then his appearance and the form was altered. Our record, our, our pattern at Solus University is that if you are a faculty member, please educate until those who are going through your class are altered in terms of character. Those who are going through your class, excellency is instilled. May God really help us. When you are teaching, I remember I sat in Dr. Hitler's class with Dr. Spanda. We were doing Greek and the Hebrew and the prophets of Israel. Gentlemen and the ladies, we sat at the feet of Gamaliel. We were taught by Dr. Zebron Ngube. He was teaching us the introduction to pastoral ministry. Hi, 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 hi. Dr. Zebron Ngube taught us. We sat at the feet of Mfune. These are the guys who went through Solusi. They did wonders. Now today, we have Dr. Spanda. If you sit at the feet of Dr. Spanda, this man is gifted. When it comes to historian, whether you are jealous, this man is gifted. This man can teach. This man can teach. He can tell you about some of the people and you even wonder, did these people exist? Where am I reading? And where is he reading? The man can teach. So Lucy University students who are in faculty of theology, you are in safe hands. In the hands of Professor Zondasara, in the hands of Professor Spanda, in the hands of um, Chinguri, in the hands of Pastor Ndlovu, you are in safe hands. In the hands of Professor Twara in education, in the hands of Nonku, in the hands of Manufu, you are in safe hands. I want to challenge all of us. Let us talk Solusi, talk Solusi, talk Solusi, a foretaste of heaven. As I conclude, did you know that in verse 30, Jesus did an excellent job until his form was altered. And as he did that, heaven just opened. Because heaven will respond. Where there is excellence, heaven will respond. When our path are well cut, heaven will respond. When our maintenance is well done, heaven is, will respond. In our classrooms, when we do a good job, heaven will respond. In our churches here, quality sermons, quality teaching, heaven will respond. It will not just respond according to this passage. It says, and then heaven was widely opened. That main gate 
must be open for students to come in. But for students to come in, they want to hear what is happening at Solus. What is happening at our cafeteria? Are our dishes a foretest of heaven? Are our lecture halls a foretest of heaven? Are our offices a foretest of heaven? Are our sermons a foretest of heaven? Are our prayers really dealing with the demonic forces? There are demons here at Solusi, and those who are asked to pray, the prayer bend, pray and deliver people from demons so that people will know that at Solusi I can be delivered in the name of Jesus. Verse 30 says, Then Abadala, Abadala, not those from the ground, no. Elders, this is Luke 9, verse 30. It says, Behold, there were two guests, heavenly guests from heaven. And who are these? This is Moses, Elijah, responding to the experience that was on the mountain, the glory that was on the mountain, they are from glory. And the glory cannot keep quiet if the glory is on earth. Glory from eternity will come down and they meet and they join with the glory from, this, from, from, from down here. And the Moses and the Elijah came down and they witnessed the glory. It is my wish that we all work together and they maintain the glory that has visited Solusi. And we keep the glory that has visited Solusi. Let us not allow anything that will chase God from Solusi. When God is here, the soil will produce. When God is here, the farm will produce. When God is here, the maintenance will do well. When God is here in our lecture halls, things are going to happen. When God is here, we shall be visited. Not only from those from GC, but even from division, even from union, even from conference, and even from around us here, because the flood of glory is at Solus University. Is it your prayer today to be part of this great place and to contribute for the flood of glory to stay at Solus? You will use your office. You will use your, your, your whatever task God has given you to make this place a fortress of heaven. If you are to cook, you will do well so that those that eat your food will really say a fortress of heaven. If you are teaching, you are going to teach to your best so that those who go under your hands will say, indeed, I've gone through hands. I've been molded. I am ready to go and save. If you are here, May I invite you to stand with me? You are saying, Pastor, I want to be part of those who are going to alter. The record says, as Jesus prayed, you, you are not supposed to pray only, but you, your task is to educate. You want to educate in a way that you will alter people's shape. You will alter people's form and then make them really ready for heaven. Is it your prayer that through your service you want to change someone's life? Is it your prayer? I want to invite you. Is it your prayer? I want to invite you in a serious form. Is this your prayer to alter someone? Is it your prayer? As a church elder, is it your prayer? As a church member like me, is it your prayer? As a student, is it your prayer that your life at Solusi, you just want to contribute towards this place? If this is your prayer, rise with me as I ask Pastor Spanda to come forward and pray for us. Pastor Spanda, come forward. And through the ministry of Pastor Spanda, we want to plead for your cause. We want to plead for your family. We want to plead for your life. Please, accept a blessing from above. Over to you, Pastor. Shall we bow our heads and pray? Our Lord and Father, we thank you for such a happy message. We thank you, Lord, for such a pointed message. Get the fourth right and uh, attack with a lot of conviction. Dear Lord, we have been nurtured on this uh, legend that Solusi is the place that you chose. We have uh, read the books, we have been told, and we are glad that we have witnessed it. We 
ต่อคนไทยว่าถ้าพัฒนาคนเนี่ยพัฒนาที่ดีทัศน์ we've seen it happening in our time Lord because of this message we invite you to change us to make us builders of a better solution to make us better witnesses for you convert us there are instances when we have become doubts and promises there are instances Lord where we have been brought with a lot of negativity but Lord we are confessing our sins change us and uh, make us teachable make us willing to change ourselves and change souls Lord we thank you for the speaker whom you have sent may you continue to give him give him better messages to continue telling us preparing us for your soon coming Lord we are praying for this place continue to change there are students who are here there are members of staff who are here and the faculty who is here there are others who are here and there are others who are not within these grounds who hear this message through digital media we invite everybody who shall hear this message to make a commitment to serve not only at Solusi but in your mission across the entire world in the name of prayer Amen Amen Thank you.